China is one of the world's poorest countries. But thousands of Chinese have come here, willing to work hard deep in the rainforest, hoping to strike it rich. It's a modern day gold rush. I'm Steve Chow. On this episode, 101 East journeys deep into the heart of this African nation to investigate who's making the money and who's paying the price. June 2013. Ghana's government suddenly cracks down on illegal Chinese gold miners. Hundreds of illegal mines are burned down across the country. About 5,000 Chinese without valid papers have to leave the country. Most of them had come to Ghana in the early 2000s, expecting gold and instant riches. Ghana has always been known for its gold. Three years after the crackdown, we visit Ghana. We want to know how locals and Chinese gold miners now get along. Chin Yang Wei is one of them. He came to Ghana three years ago at the age of 24, hoping to make a lot of money. It takes us seven hours to drive to Chin Yang Wei's mine in his car. It's a long way from home and family. Most of these migrants lead a lonely life. Like Chin Yang Wei's friend Liang Bin, who rarely goes home. The trip winds through towns and past shanties until we reach the tropical rainforest. The gold mines are in the heart of Ghana. It looks like the end of the road. We've arrived. A Spartan camp, 
a few barracks offer shelter. Minimal comfort, but the miners don't mind. They'll accept all of that for the promise of gold. The locals are responsible for the tough jobs. Less skilled than the Chinese, they do backbreaking work and everything that's dangerous. They're excavating in small teams, working in shifts. Their goal, resting gold from the mud. They loosen the gold with a high pressure water jet. The gold miners learnt this method from China's Shanglin region, an area that specialises in gold mining. The soil gradually releases tiny amounts of the precious metal. This bowl contains perhaps a few grams of gold, but here, even that's worth a fortune. Sometimes thieves attack the camps. That's why armed men keep guard. It's okay. <laughs> Twice a day, the valuable bowl is escorted to the camp. At that point, no one yet knows what it contains. The final washing is done with a few people in a closed hut. The mood is upbeat. Then finally, the much longed for gold. This morning, the men end up with about 200 grams, worth over $6,000 for half a day of work. A good yield, good quality, but always with the fear that the golden days might suddenly end.
Some villages are against the gold mining, as it poisons and destroys the land. Like their cocoa fields. For generations, cocoa has been a source of income for the locals. They grow it on small parcels. The village chiefs regularly get together to discuss solutions. But it's complicated. Many youth from remote villages have found work in the gold mines. The Chinese mines are quite often a community's biggest employer. But there is an environmental cost. Two chiefs take us to where a river used to be. This is where the villagers once got their water. The chiefs still perform rituals for the river, even though nothing remains of it except memories. Down the road, we see a shocking image. The miners are long gone. But they've totally destroyed the land, leaving behind a barren moonscape. <laughs> Coca trees have been destroyed. Everything is coming apart. The river polluted. The water undrinkable. The fish gone. This destruction galvanised the authorities to take action in 2013. They destroyed the illegal mines and deported 5,000 Chinese miners. The immigration office insists its actions were justified. But in 2013, it was a major issue because it was all over the place, in Ashanti region, in Western region, in Central region, and we were feeling the effect of the water bodies being destroyed. You could see water looking brown. You think it's, a, it's an untied road. I was shocked that this is what was happening because of such illegal mining activities. This official lecture isn't easy for the Chinese migrants to hear. Some have suffered great losses. Like Mr. Su, one of the richest and most powerful investors. He came to Ghana in 1995. Gold mining made him rich. But in 2013, 
he lost many of his millions. Yabushi 那个工地二话不讲。利用。Despite Chu they come here to make friends, to do business. But they get corrupt if they miss some other people. Who wants to give them a shortcut? Who wants to lead them through shortcut of doing things? That's the only challenge I see with the Chinese. But they are not they are not they are not they are, they are not bad at all. They are like us. We visit one of the mines, where Mr. Su is a shareholder. His partners are having breakfast, preparing for the day ahead. Their mines are a little way from the camp. There's dozens of acres of hand mine land here. With techniques developed by the Chinese, Ghanaian workers haul hundreds of tons of soil every day. The pay is above the national average. Hu Zeyu says for his workers, the job in the mine is a lucky break. Their living conditions, however, seem very sparse, as you can see by looking at their beds. The kitchen is also very basic, but there is stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah
过两个，两个，两个专门给他们做饭的。他们一般家里人都吃两顿，但是我们这里他们都是吃三顿。你说不脏啊？呀，你这一包，这干的 money money， 哎，我这干干的 ，some。Gold is being mined on a small scale here. Two diggers, one ripper, and an investment of around $530,000 put up by several investors. It's far from the hundreds of millions invested into industrial mining by big global companies. It's suitable for the local people, because it's not a very big scale of the world. It's just a small scale of the world. It's not a small scale of the world. But it's not a small scale of the world. If it's a big scale, it's not possible to do it. It's not possible to do it. It's not possible to do it. It's not possible. But together, these hundreds of small mines are making the cash tilts ring, like in Kumasi, the country's second biggest city. An entire district specializes in dealing with gold miners. Since they arrived 10 years ago, they've invested millions, but not always in Ghanaian products. These pipes are from China. 这些呢是我们上林特产呢自己搞出来的一些挖金的设备，懂吗？啊，这些是我们挖金的设备。这些是用饼不用介绍的，像那些洗洁精啊，这些很简单的，这些就是一般我们生活用品嘛，是吧？日用品这些。Oh, they are very good. Why? Because they treat us like they are two times now. Like, what's that saying? Maybe like them. They treat us like them. They treat us like them. In the south, near the capital Accra, it's time for an evening swim in the ocean. We meet Mr. Su again on the beach. Many here blame the Chinese mines for the environmental disaster. But Mr. Su doesn't see any alternative. In Ghana, gold mining is changing the country. In the hope of leaving poverty behind, the Ghanaians are paying a heavy price with the vast destruction of their natural heritage. Only strong government action and less destructive mining methods can stop resources being plundered at the cost of future generations. But will that change come in time?